What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be focusing on task 4 and task 6. So please take out your notebooks, have your writing utensil in hand, and get ready to take notes. Alright, today's topic is scent marketing. Let's first look for the word scent marketing within the reading passage very very quickly. Okay, it's the last word of the second sentence so let's check that sentence out. One effective method that they have discovered is scent marketing. Okay, one effective method is scent marketing. That's indicating that the definition has already been given to us in the first sentence. So let's look at the first sentence. Stores commonly search for ways to entice shoppers to purchase more products when they visit. Thank you very much. I decided to paraphrase what we just read in this way. Scent marketing, which is an effective method that entices shoppers to purchase more products when they visit stores. So all I did was figure out how to make scent marketing, which and the definition given in the reading passage connect with each other. That's something that you should always be aware about. So for instance, if I didn't say is, I would have gotten a point deduction because grammatically that's wrong, all right? So when you're taking notes on the reading passage, don't forget what you're gonna have to say before whatever you take notes on, okay? All right. Now that we're done with the reading passage, let's listen to the lecture. Listen to a lecture about the same topic and take notes. You've all probably visited the local department store only to be besieged by all of the different scents. Have you ever wondered why there are so many different scents? Well, it's called scent marketing, and it's the concept that various scents actually encourage people to shop more. There was a study conducted a while back about the scents used in a department store. One store scented its entire women's clothing section with fragrances which were appealing to women. It also sprayed its men's clothing section with aromas that men found to be pleasing. Interestingly, it doubled the number of clothes that it sold. In a nutshell, both men and women, since they were attracted to those smells, associated the clothes with those fragrances and made more purchases than they normally would have. There was also a survey about running shoes that was conducted recently. I think you'll find the results fascinating. Well, more often than not, people preferred for the running shoes they purchased to have some kind of fragrance. Furthermore, they actually expected to pay more money, around $10 in most cases, for the shoes that smelled nicer. So, not only do smells encourage people to spend more, but they also get people to pay more for the same products. In this lecture, the professor ended up talking about two studies. So what we're going to understand this as is two examples. All right, now that we know what the professor talked about in the lecture, we should be able to organize not only the beginning sentence, but also the ending statement. All right, now let's take a look at the notes. The first section says, a department store scented its women's clothing section with fragrances that are pleasing to women. And it did the same to what? What do you think? The men's clothing section. Uh, so this department store, or actually so, consumers made associations with the scents and ended up making more purchases. All right, now the second example says, more often than not, people prefer, what was that here? Running shoes, right? Running shoes to have some kind of fragrance and expected to pay more for the shoes that smell nicer. So get people to spend more and pay more. All right, so that's what the professor talked about and those are the words that I decided to actually take notes on. Hopefully you understand by now that it's only about 70% of what the lecture or what, of what the professor said. All right, so let's listen to my sample response. In the lecture, the professor elaborated on a couple of different examples to explain the concept of scent marketing. To begin with, a department store decided to scent its women's clothing section with fragrances that are pleasing to women, and it did the same thing to the men's clothing section. Consequently, consumers made associations with the scents and ended up making more purchases. In addition to this, more often than not, people actually prefer their running shoes to have some kind of fragrance. Plus, they even expected to pay more money for the shoes that smell nicer. In other words, 
scent marketing gets people to spend more money and pay more money for the same product. To sum up, these were two perfect examples of scent marketing, which is an effective method that entices shoppers to purchase more products when they visit stores, given by the professor and the lecturer. All right. Now, I had about 14 seconds left when I was done summarizing the lecturer's information, which is more than enough time for me to say or include the definition that I got from the reading passage in the ending statement. So if you have approximately 15 seconds left, or if you have more than 15 seconds left, definitely go for the definition in the ending statement. Understand? All right, now let's move over to task six. Listen to a lecture and take notes. While we often point out how humans benefit by cooperating with one another, we should also note that many animals act in concert too. In fact, without cooperating with one another, many animals would be much less well off. For example, many animals cooperate to maximize their protection from predators while others work together in order to locate and exploit new food sources. Let's think about deer first. With their antlers, you'd imagine they wouldn't need any protection. But what about does, fawns, and older deer? Wolves and other predators can take down a deer easily, especially by hunting in packs. So what do deer do? Well, one defensive measure they use is to feed in groups. This helps keep them safe from predators. How? Well, for one, they can alert one another more quickly when predators are nearby, which allows younger, older, or weaker deer to hide or escape. Second, their safety in numbers. Predators are far more likely to attack a single animal than a large group of them. Now, how about honeybees? They work together too. You've heard of the honeybees dance, right? That's a textbook case of animal cooperation. When looking for food, honeybees all head in different directions. When they find a potential food source, they return to the hive. Then they perform a complicated dance, which scientists believe actually gives the direction, distance, and amount of food located. This allows the bees to abandon unpromising searches and move on to food sources that are closer and which will be able to provide more food for the hive. In this lecture, the professor talked about how animals act in concert with one another. Act in concert means cooperate, all right? Now, the first example was about deer, and the second example was about the honeybees dance. So if I have too much time left, after I'm done summarizing the lecture's information, I'm gonna say which was illustrated by deer and the honeybees dance to eat up the extra seconds that I have left. All right, now let's look at the really important part, the core of our response. Deer need protection from predators, so feed in groups because helps keep safe, safe. <laughs> Can alert each other more quickly and have safety in numbers. All right, now the second part says, honeybees dance is a textbook case of animal cooperation is a textbook case of means is a great example of. When looking for food, split up. Return to hive and perform dance shows direction and distance of food sources. All right? Okay, now that we know what I took notes on, let's listen to my sample response. The professor gave a lecture about how animals act in concert with one another. To begin with, Deer need protection from predators, so they always feed in groups. This is mainly because doing so helps keep them safe and permits them to alert each other much more quickly. Last but not least, deer can have safety in numbers because predators are less likely to attack a group. Furthermore, the honeybee's dance is a textbook case of animal cooperation. When looking for food, honeybees split up into different directions. When they find potential food sources, they return to the hive and perform a dance that shows the direction and distance of the food sources. In summation, this was how animals act in concert with one another, given by the professor in the lecture. 
Thank you for your time and consideration. All right, that just about wraps up today's video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed what you had to see, and um, I hope that it will help you understand how to tackle the task four and task six questions a little bit more um, efficiently from now on. Uh, as I've said before, taking notes is arguably the most important aspect of succeeding in both the speaking and writing sections because four out of the six questions in the speaking section are integrated speaking questions and half, 50% of the writing section is an integrated writing task. So you got to take notes. It's not something that you can avoid. It's inevitable. For speaking questions, integrated speaking questions, if you're able to take good notes, then it honestly doesn't matter how much of the information you understood. If you are able to take notes efficiently with, you know, sentences already on your piece of paper, then you're going to have a much easier time uh, generating your own sentences from the neat and organized notes that you have right under your nose which is going to allow you to pretend like you understood everything that you wrote down. And that's the most important thing. That's what's, that's what's beautiful about the speaking section. You don't really have to understand what you have heard. You just have to pretend that you did. Okay. All right. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video and we're going to be covering integrated essays. So if integrated writing is challenging for you, be sure to stay tuned and to check the next video out. Peace.